Hi everyone, today we're looking at a broken AIM4 gaming motherboard from ASUS. It's B550 series gaming board. I'll put the full model name on the screen for you. Let's see if we can fix it and maybe give it a second life. Before powering on, let's check the main power rails for short. We will use multimeter in resistance measuring mode. The rails um, should be in kilo ohms range. Um, let me show the multimeter on screen. Okay, 3 volts, 5 volts, and we have 12 volts, kilo ohms as well, minus 12 volts, even mega ohms. Let's check CPU, kilo ohms, CPU to V core, kilo ohms here, and the V core is 55 ohms, which is normal. We can clearly see three large coils on the board. Um, this coil is, looks like DDR power line, also known as VPP. It's going to be two and a half volts when motherboard is powered on. This largest co coil on the board is probably VDDQ. It's responsible for supplying voltage to the memory interface. So this line probably goes directly into memory and to CPU slot. This coil is probably power line of our chipset, which is 1.8 volts or 1.05 volts. Let's measure them. So VPP is kilo ohms, nice. Then we need VDDQ and also kilo ohms. Oh no, it's 460 ohms. Well, it's good. And TCH is 500 ohms, which is normal. Since the board has M4 CPU socket, I'm not sure that it will power on without CPU. M4 boards are usually involved CPU into their startup sequence. Okay, here's CPU here. Memory. Okay. Following to the memory installation, instructions showed right on the board. First slot we should use is A2. It's outermost memory slot, this one. Okay, let's try to power it on and to see what will be the current draw. Okay, 138 milliamps, nice. Pressing power button. We have a reaction. Two and a half amps. It's not steady, so okay, definitely booting according to this LED. And okay. Uh, looks like I need to plug in my HDMI cable to see the picture. Let's do it again. So I plugged in the HDMI cable. Uh, here we see the current draw. Here we'll see the pause screen. Let's power it on. 136 milliamps. Let's press the power button. We have a LED light up. Green LED, which means putting. Do we have a pause screen here? And we do. We have a pause screen. So power isn't the problem. That means the real issue is hiding somewhere else. Let's shut it down. Disassemble and take a quick look under the microscope for a closer visual inspection. Okay, so I found missing components. This time is two MOSFETs, this MOSFET and this MOSFET, and here should be a capacitor. So according to the schematic, they are part of USB standby power line, which means that we do not have USB power during standby in USB devices, probably cannot be used to wake up the motherboard. Let's replay them.
This is how the motherboard looks after a deep cleaning. It was extremely dirty before, but now it's shining like new. After this kind of spa treatment, it's very important to dry the board properly. I use, use a rework heating station at about 150 degrees Celsius for around 30 or maybe 40 minutes to make sure no moisture is left inside. For rinsing, it's best to use distilled water or even better, an isopropyl alcohol bath or at least a good spray. That way you avoid mineral deposits or salt residue that could cause problems later. So I have assembled the board and stress tested with windows. It's important to check all USB ports, HDMI, display port, uh, four pin fans, connectors all over the board. It is also vital to check sound and M2 slots. In my opinion, this motherboard is very good and will serve for someone instead of moving to a dump. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this motherboard repair journey, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you think about this repair. See ya!